So I have for you today what could be the most anticipated release of 2022 from Audemars Piguet. It is the 50th anniversary Royal Oak Chrono with the green dial. So the first thing I want to say is that this watch was not easy to get. I mean, it was a nightmare to be able to get one for this video. I was lucky enough that a friend of mine, shout out to you, let me borrow it for this video and I am so thankful to have it for a couple days and be able to really wear it and feel what this watch is like. So initially, when I saw this watch for the first time, I was looking at it indoors, non-natural lighting, you know, LED lighting, fluorescent, whatnot. And the first impression that I got on it was how dark the dial was. You know, I guess because nowadays, we're always expecting that emerald bright green from the yellow gold Daytona, or maybe even perhaps that bright green that's on the yellow gold chrono version from a couple years back. You know, that's the one that initially, I guess I was expecting, you know? So when I first saw this dial, I said, man, it looks really dark. I actually wasn't even that, I didn't really even like it. I kind of, I kind of at the moment said it looked like black, you know? Uh, but it must have been the lighting because he did assure me, he goes, in the sun, it looks way better. Now that I've been wearing it for five, six hours already in the Miami sun, what I realize is that it is nice and green. It's more like a hunter green or whatever. Maybe they call it a khaki green, but I feel it's got more of a darker, richer green. And I like it much better now that I was able to really see that green pop. I guess because since it's so easy to put just this bright green dial, they kind of wanted something a little bit different, something that just didn't stand out so much. I remember when I first saw the 5711 with the green dial, I had said in my video that it was dark as well. Everybody said, well, I'm looking at it with sunglasses. I mean, listen, I look at my stuff with and without sunglasses. And with the sunglasses right now, for the record, it still looks nice and green. Whereas when I saw it indoors with no glasses, it looked dark. So since we're already covering the topic of the dial, which let's just face it, that is so far, the main focus of this review is I realized after seeing the watch many times on IG social media, I had not realized initially that they had removed the iconic AP logo on the dial. It only says Audemars Piguet. And honestly, I kind of dig that. I feel like it completely sets it apart from the other ones and focuses more on the actual name brand, which is Audemars Piguet, as opposed to AP. We all love using the abbreviation and just saying AP, but I do like that they transitioned on this new watch and spelled it out completely right there. It also makes the dial look just that little bit less busy. Last thing that I want to point out about the dial is that the second track is printed on a flat surface instead of it being printed on the traditional waffle dial pattern. Little subtle change, but it also kind of gives the dial a bit more texture. I mean, funny to say that, being that these dials have some of the most textures out of all dials, but it just gives it that little bit more texture where it goes from waffle to smooth. I like that, good touch. So let's move on to the case and bracelet. They've made some subtle but major changes. Some of you guys will like it, some won't. Uh, I kind of like it. I feel like they're subtle enough that it makes you obviously feel like it's a new model, but not crazy enough that goes past the original design. The chamfered edges of the case are a bit wider this time. Just gives it so much more surface area to have that contrast from the satin finish to the polish. I like that. I think it looks a lot better. And for the future, when these watches have to be refinished, I think it will also preserve the original look better as well. That's what I'm guessing, and I'm pretty sure it will. Those subtle things do make the watch tend to look a little bit bigger. Although they both are 41 millimeters, 
I would say that the watch does seem to look just a little bit wider. Some will say it looks slender. I don't think so. I think the watch sits much taller on my wrist. That's probably because these cases that had the new in-house movement are a bit bigger. Another thing is the bracelet. They slimmed down the bracelet to the same exact dimension as the gold versions. I think that was a good touch because previously the stainless steel links were a bit thicker. And you know, all that just makes the watch stick out a bit more from your wrist and makes it look larger. Same thing as when you wear a Royal Oak Offshore 42 millimeter on a bracelet, those are some thick links. And when you notice, it just sits out so much farther than usual. So I think it was a good touch and it also just kind of makes you feel like you're getting a new watch all the way around. So if I had to say what is the business end of this watch, I would definitely have to say it's the green dial. However, we cannot go around the fact that on the case back, the rotor now says 50th anniversary. I think that's an excellent touch. I love that. I love that they put the 50th anniversary on the rotor. The only phone that I had to pick about that is that, well, they're planning on producing 50,000 of them. So I don't know if that's like, you know, that much of an anniversary, but then again, brands like Rolex have made a watch for an anniversary, like for example, the Hulk, which were mass produced and did have a very, very, very big successful outcome for that line. So I do like it and I do like that it completely stands out far from all the other previous models. One last little touch I wanna to mention about that rotor is I do like that they went with a white instead of a rose gold rotor. Because yeah, it would have looked nice, for example, on the 15400s and stuff like that, that they have that nice striking contrast. But I kinda like that it all went kind of monotone on those colors. I like that it's not rose gold and I think that was a good touch. Quick touch on the movement, it comes with the new Audemars Piguet in-house 4401 movement, which was greatly necessary at this point. I feel like it's been so long before AP finally got an in-house movement upgrade on their chronos, and I think it made an amazing difference in this watch. A couple different things, including the fact that it has a flyback, is one thing that I like because Although no one really uses the flyback as much, what I feel is that it prevents people from damaging the movement. I can't tell you how many times I gotta explain to people, you have to start, stop, and reset. Never reset without stopping the movement. With the flyback, you can make those mistakes if you're new to this and not damage the movement. Pricing for this watch is $33,800, and let's just face it, I mean, at this point, we just gotta laugh that off because I don't see too many people getting this watch at retail, including myself, for the exception of my friend. Uh, he was lucky enough to get it retail, but not too many people will be getting this retail. And based the way that the market has been going the last three, four years, uh, we could only guess to say that this watch for sure will probably be a watch that goes over $100,000. I mean, when you compare it to some of the other pieces right now, considering the fact that the previous AP Chrono Panda is over $100,000 as well. So it's safe to say that with this green dial, we're not really sure how far it will go yet. So being that it's a 50th anniversary model, it most likely will be going to the moon. So the conclusion is, initially, I kinda like the blue dial. I feel like the blue dial might be the one that I would have rocked with the most. However, when I first saw the green dial, I was a little bit apprehensive about it. Now that I've been able to wear it, I really like it. Uh, some of the things I don't like is that it's, you know, very similar to the 5711 with the green dial. It's almost like everybody's just copying everybody. Then again, I'm not sure if I would have enjoyed a yellow dial or a red dial or anything of that nature where green and blue tends to go very good with watches. And they tend to match a lot with everything. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is I love the watch. I didn't think I was going to like it. And now that I see the green dial, I could say that I almost so far like it better than the blue. So comment below what you think about the 50th anniversary green AP Chrono. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel.